Okay, let me start my presentation. So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Sergey Lubich. I'm a managing partner of NEO St. Petersburg Competence Center. I'm glad to be here. Today I will tell about uh, the core project of our team, a decentralized distributed object storage, which will be integrated into NEO 3.0 to build to help the smart economy. Digitalization of our everyday life generates, generates a lot of data. Cloud storage is supposed to solve the issue of storing a rapidly growing amount of data. Building economically, economically optimal and technically reliable data storage is a hot and challenging topic in the cloud storage industry. The global market for cloud storage industry is expected to reach about $97 billion by 2022, growing at a rate of CAGR of 24.8%. Growth in demand for low-cost and reliable data storages is observed in small, medium, and large enterprises. Cloud storage market growth among SMEs shows that this is a niche for business in global regions. Although hybrid cloud storages are like, sorry, yep. Although hybrid storages are took the market and they dominate. Um, we have developed our storage platform to be used as any of uh, these types of storages, hybrid, public, and, and private. So cloud storage offers myriad benefits, such as scalable data storage uh, for files, applications, and other types of data. Uh, improved collaboration, improved collaboration are regardless of team members' location and also save money and time uh, by uh, eliminating the need to build a costly data center and hire an IT team uh, to manage it. Uh, however, there are several uh, concerns inherent to cloud storage, such as someone else is looking after your data, cyber attacks, insider threats, government intrusion, legal liability, and lack of support. Each of you can become a victim of any of these threats. You trust your data to a third party, and you do not have a full control over your data. Decentralized cloud storage can efficiently, can efficiently solve the highlighted issues. Of course, cyber attacks and legal liability are, are permanent threats in both types of storages. Uh, in addition, it is required to build an optimal economic model for, for the decentralized data storage. In order to tackle those issues, NEO founded NEO Competence Center in St. Petersburg, Russia, in 2018. The core R&D project of our team is NEO FS, a decentralized distributed storage platform. You can find a promo video of NEO FS on this QR code. NEO SPCC are, has established collaborations in academia, public organizations, namely Itmo University in Computer Science, St. Petersburg State University of Economics in Economics and Management, and also public organizations, such as St. Petersburg Techno Park for hosting conferences and exhibitions, and Russian Association of Crypto Industry and Blockchain for legal advisory. The goal of NEO Competence Center is to take back full control over your data with a decentralized storage on NEO, NEO FS, which allows controlling where your data is stored, how your data is stored, and who can get access to your data. Let's consider the basic components of the developed system. NeoFS network consists of two types of nodes, inner ring and outer ring. Outer ring nodes are responsible for storing data and ensuring its integrity and availability. Inner ring nodes are responsible for maintaining the information about net network topology, accounting, and data audit, which is a verification of a correct data storage in the network for payments. We are planning to integrate new consensus nodes with the new FS inner ring nodes to call new FS from the smart contract in the new 3.0. Following new stance on governments, we pursued strict geographical and political decentralization of validators. Our system can be used by applications through new FS gate and by dApps in the new smart contract. 
The first advantage of NeoFS is data placement. In our user, in our, in our system, user can control uh, the placement and availability of data by the network map, by the network map, and uh, data placement method. What is network map? Network map is represented in the form of a graph. Uh, it contains the information about groups of nodes, their geographical location, and other parameters necessary for correct data placement and search. Uh, for instance, type of hard disk, uh, network throughput, and so on. Uh, we, can, we can define, <coughs> sorry, yeah. Uh, we can store and get objects from the system uh, without referring to a third party. This is a great advantage of our system. The user can define data placement rule. The placement rule uh, consists of a set of select and filter operations. Uh, sorry. For instance, if user defines uh, the select operation uh, to, store ob to store objects um, in two different geographical locations, we obtain the following subgraph. In addition, user can define uh, a data placement on the nodes uh, only with uh, hard disks, SSD, by applying filter operation. As a result, we obtain the following subgraph. Select and filter operations can be combined, and user can define any data placement uh, in the network. So the same, the same set of nodes is defined, no matter who and where uh, performs data placement rule operations. In NeoFS, we have implemented uh, the content delivery network with the possibility to define uh, parameters for data storage and in the decentralized network. Select and filter operations define uh, a subgraph of the network map uh, to store objects. Uh, this subgraph is, is called a container. Uh, from user side, for instance, in Amazon S3, um, container is a, like the closest logical entity is a bucket. From the system side in NeoFS, um, the container is a virtual entity independently serviced, and one network node can be a part of multiple containers. Uh, using the container, uh, allows to maintain network scalability. This is a big issue in, in our project. The second advantage of NeoFS is data control integrity. Um, so, uh, data control consists of uh, the following procedures. Data audit, it is performed by the inner ring. It verifies um, availability and integrity of data, and takes a decision uh, on payment to hosters. And also data replication and migration. Uh, those procedures are performed by authoring nodes in the container. So NeoFS has a set of key properties. It, is it has full toler tolerant infrastructure, user-defined reliability policy, geographical and network scalability, easy third-party services integration, more benefits for a competitive price, and use an existing NeoGas token in Neo 3.0. So NeoFS can be applied in several uh, use cases, such as users' private data storage, DEPs or application content delivery, small medium enterprises data exchange, unstructured IoT data, and fixed document storage. So now I would like to show the video demo of NeoFS. Uh, Please. The screen is divided into two parts. A right side shows the system status screen, which displays the number of stored file chunks, the operation of the consensus protocol, and the map, showing location of chunks in the network. Data is collected in real time from the NeoFS nodes. The console application for working with the system is open at the left. At the first stage, Using the console application, we are creating a container with a storage policy in three copies in different countries. In this case, you can specify any placement rule using query language. For example, to store data on nodes that have SSD disk in four countries, one of which has to be in the US, another one is in Europe, 
and two in any other regions. Or to declare data storage only in your own country, if it is required by your legislation. When the container is created, we will upload text file. The placement of the file corresponds to declared storage policy for the container and is displayed on the map. Our system provides a convenient interface for developing client applications. Any developer can make any interaction he needs with NeoFS in his app or dApp. Create any application, be it a photo gallery, a video service, or a POSIX Lite pseudo file system. We will show this with an example of a client UI integrated with the Neo Wallet. We are using a graphical application. After entering the Neo Wallet, we can look at the status of the Wallet and NeoFS account. Let's transfer some amount of gas from the Neo Wallet as a deposit for data storage in NeoFS and confirm the transaction and wait for the transaction to appear in the Neo blockchain. After the transaction was accepted by the NEO blockchain, we see that the transferred amount of gas has been credited to our NEOFS balance. In the storage section, we see the container previously created in the console application. It contains the uploaded text file. We are creating a new container with a storage policy of three copies of the file in different countries with a capacity of six nodes. Let's upload a video file to the created container. The map displays the nodes that have received chunks of the stored file. We can see that chunks of the video file are uniformly distributed over the container nodes without any additional request to the nodes. Thus, the problem of network balancing is solved. Due to the representation of the network map in the form of a graph and the consistent result of placement functions. Let's upload another file and open both of them by downloading from the system. Hey, держи лимп! Я тебе это припомню, какой твой номер? Один, один, один. Now we are removing the video file. As you can see on the graph, the number of chunks in the system has decreased. We will demonstrate how data audit works in NeoFS. We previously uploaded data to the system by creating 15 storage groups. Storage group is a logical validation entity that aggregates a big amount of data from one user. Any number of storage groups can be created within one container. The system audits storage group for proper storage and payment is made based on the result of the audit for the entire storage group and not for individual files. For demonstration, we are initiating audit from the command line. On the histogram, you can see a successful audit result. Let's corrupt the operation of one of the system nodes and initiate audit again. We will make sure that not all groups have passed the audit and therefore the storage nodes won't receive payment. It motivates storage nodes to maintain the consistency of the stored data. Let's consider again the system with preloaded data. We will deliberately violate the policy of storing a part of the data in the system, corrupting the data stored by one of the nodes. 124 chunks have been stored on this node. We are initializing data replication on all the remaining nodes and see that they will perform 124 data replication operations by copying exactly those chunks that they were corrupted, restoring the storage policy.
In a real system, this operation is asynchronous, and nodes of the system are engaged in self-regulation independently in the work process. NeoFS network map is formed by the nodes of inner ring, once an epoch. When changing the network map, the storage nodes configuration of some containers may change, which will require data migration. Due to the mechanism of container formation and data placement, only containers with new nodes will be migrated. The rest of the network will remain unchanged. We are adding a new node to the network to initiate the migration. We can see that about 10% of all chunks have migrated, which is correlated with the network size change. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you very much. So we'll hopefully release our proof of concept by the end of Q3 2019. Yep. Yeah. Thank you.